Welcome back YouTube. My name is Josh and today we're going to be talking about one of the four principles in OOP or object oriented program within Swift program. So today the principle that we will be talking about is encapsulation. So what is encapsulation exactly? So let's go ahead and talk about that. So encapsulation is the concept of which we hide the data or methods, and if you don't know, methods is just a function inside of a class. So it's the way we hide this so from the outside uh, so it cannot intervene or use, so outside of those classes. So what do I mean by that? Well, first off, I'm gonna take you over here to the drawing board, do my best at doing a sketch for you, and then we're gonna jump into a quick playground and actually see it live in Swift code. Those two things, I think, together will really get the ball turning in your heads and getting you to understand this concept. When we're all said and done, you probably are gonna be thinking, wow, that is pretty easy, because it is an easy concept. So to start off, we're gonna start with a class. So we have a class, okay? And this class, I'm just gonna put C here for class, uh, has a method in it, and then it's got two variables, right? Variable, these are both V's, sorry. <laughs> variable one and variable two. So uh, everything is going good here. We have not set either of these to be private. So what happens is anywhere else in this app, so we'll just say that this is the entire app itself, can now access the method in either, either of these variables. You know, all we have to do is initialize this class and then we can grab these. Okay, that's all fine and dandy, except this variable here, let's say it was set to be uh, cat. Okay, so C-A-T inside this code over here when we created the class. We set that up, everything is good, but then later on in our app, we forget about that, and then we, and we change that variable to dog. Well, now you have two different things pointing to the same variable, which you can see could cause a nightmare, a pretty big mess, and a bug that is very, very hard to find in some cases. So how do you prevent that? Well, you prevent that by putting the keyword private in front. And then that makes, you're, in, you're using encapsulation there, and that makes this variable now un, uh, unable to access in, from inside the app. So you cannot no longer use that uh, or access that anywhere here. The only time and place you can actually access that, which we'll see in the playground in a minute, is inside the class itself. And that is the, the whole concept of encapsulation in Swift. So now let's go real quick over to the playground and show you a real life example. Let's go. All right, so now let's go into this playground and let's go over what we have so far. So all I have is a very simple class called car collection. And in here it has two variables and one method, very similar to what we just saw on the drawing board. Uh, so one is a paid, uh, paid price variable. The other one is a retail price. Paid price basically meaning how much you paid for the vehicle. Retail is how much that vehicle is actually worth. Uh, I just did a simple initializer for those two. And then I have a method here called was the price paid smart. So, hey, how much you spent for this car or vehicle, did that make sense? Did you make, did you purchase, uh, did you spend too much on it or did you uh, get a good deal? That's basically what this function is going to do. So, but before we begin this whole function and writing it out, we're going to need another variable here. So let's go ahead and write that out. Var, we're gonna name it total, and we're gonna make that an optional integer. So optional meaning later on down here, it's gonna to need to be un uh, unwritten, or you can do the shorthand where you do the two question marks. You'll see that in one minute. So we're gonna go right here, and we're gonna say, uh, it to we're gonna set the total that we just created is equal to the retail price subtracted from the paid price. So that's how we're gonna get that. And now, let me fix this real quick. Cool. Uh, and now we're going to go ahead and, and check for this. So if total or, so the two question marks is or, because this is an optional up here. So if total is nil, we're going to say or zero. But it's going to always be something because right here we're telling it. We're gonna, they're going to have to pass in two for, uh, paid price and a retail price. So this total is going to have to be something. So I could actually add an exclamation mark and force unwrap that, but we're gonna safely do the or zero. So if that is greater than zero, 
So as long as it's greater than zero means you had a you made a profit. Uh, so hey, it costs a hundred dollars, and we'll we'll try it out in a minute. And you only paid eighty dollars. That would be twenty, which means you had a profit and you paid less than the retail value. That's what this function is doing for us. So we're gonna say, hey, if this is true, go ahead and print. We're just gonna do a simple print statement, and I say, uh, you got a killer deal. Okay, and then right here, we're gonna do an else real quick, and we're gonna just do print, meaning it's gonna be less than zero or in the negatives, and we're gonna say, uh, that looks like a bad purchase, okay? And so that's what's gonna be printed out if you did, didn't do a very good purchase, cool. So no errors here, let's go ahead and run this just to make sure. Everything is good here. So let's see what it actually looks like uh, when we initialize this. So let's go ahead and do let par one be set to car collection and then let's put a paid price in so let's say we paid five five thousand for a car and the retail price of this car is seven thousand dollars so we got it basically for two thousand dollars cheaper so that that's a good deal let's see if our function or our method works correctly so let's do car one now and go down to this was price paid smart now it's going to do this uh logic here for us and print out for us you got a killer deal cool so that is working we paid two thousand less than retail so that should work let's go ahead and reverse these just to verify that that is working so this one should print out that looks like a bad purchase okay so that is working as it should so everything is good however we still have this total right here that we do not need access to but we can access it so if we did car one dot total i can set total to whatever i want um let's do fifty let let's set it to and now let's go ahead and print now it's going to be an optional but that's okay uh we're going to print car one dot total and see what it prints out uh prints out fifty thousand. So we're able to go in there and change and mess with this total. And we don't need to. Nowhere else in the app at this current time needs that. And that's what I was talking about with that drawing. So how do we prevent this? Well, we prevent this by actually going in here and using the private keyword. Uh, and now this is a, a, an access keyword. There's actually five of those. I am going to have my next video is going to be discussing those. So I'm going to go over those as a pretty quick conversation and you can uh, stay tuned and be looking out for that where I go in detail on those. Uh, but for now, don't worry about private. Just know that uh, in this case now, you're setting this to private. Anywhere inside this class can see the total because you can access it in this method here. Uh, you can see it up here. However, now we're getting errors down here outside of this class. So I'm gonna fold this class so you can see. It's right here. So this is all outside of the class, but it's saying, hey, total, it actually tells you, due to it being private in a protection level, we cannot access it. Same thing with it down here. So now that makes your code that much safer and anywhere in this app, it can no longer be touched. That is awesome. And that is encapsulation as a whole. I hope seeing it wrote out and then seeing it actually in a live playground made more sense. I'm seeing a lot of videos out there and no one's really breaking it down and showing you both sides of it. So if this was beneficial and you like this teaching style, please let me know in the comments. Give me a like. Hit that bell if you want to see my upcoming content. Like those access controls that's coming. And also, if you have not yet, please, please, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so very much and have a great day.